So you might think the best thing about Scotland is kilts, haggis, and of course, the battered Mars bar. But you may be shocked to hear they've also got property up there too as an investment. And it actually is bloody good. So why is it I don't invest in the Scottish property market? So before I break down why it is I don't invest in Scotland, instead, let me just take you through some of the differences, and they are quite small, but quite a big impasse between the Scottish investment market and the English investment market in English, Wales, and Northern Ireland, to be fair, compared to Scotland. So I'm never going to do that again, don't worry. So stamp duty, let's start with that. Um, stamp duty, we have a scale here in England, which really predominantly most buy-to-let investment levels will hit a 3% surcharge. So for example, if you've got 150000 pound property, you are going to pay 3% of that as your Lordships or Majesty's uh, stamp duty charge, which is going to be £4,500. Whereas in Scotland, they just want to tax you like a little bit more and they're going to put on 4% as a stamp duty. So it's only a minor difference, but actually that impacts things quite a lot. Remember, I'm a massive proponent of a return on capital employed, so return on cash employed, ROCE. And so the more cash that you put into something, the lower that return comes in. So I focus on a 7% return on capital employed long term, including everything, which is really important. Um, but that extra 1% going from 3 to 4 is another £1,500. Next is the holds of the property. That's really weird. Freehold and leasehold. In England, we have freehold properties and leasehold properties. It's a little bit weird, just a very short thing. Is freehold, you own the heavens above and the hells below. Genuine technical term, in, by the way. I know it's weird. But basically, freehold is you own the land underneath it. Um, whereas with a uh, leasehold property, you own the property, but you don't own the rights to the land. And so you are going on somebody else's land and you usually pay a ground rent and a service charge. So you have that all over the UK in many different ways. In Scotland, it is predominantly freehold or share of freehold. So even in blocks of flats and stuff like that, typically you will have a share of the freehold and a joint liability to contribute towards the maintenance of the property. However, that's the main difference between the holds of the properties. Gazumping or gazundering or gazumping, weird words, right? But in England, what hisses me off is gazumping on property. So I actually, uh, Scotland, you're better. There it is. You're just better than England at this. So the way that we have it in our system, which is stupid, and I'll tell you why, and it's horrible, by the way, is anyone can pull out of the property anyone can pull out of the property until the day of exchange. And um, that exchange and completion are usually the same day, if not like a week apart. But the reason for that is we agree to buy a property and then we do all of our due diligence. So we get a surveyor out there after to get a RIC survey. We get the legals done and they do all of the checks on it. And subject to all of that coming back A-OK, -okay, we would then purchase on the property. The reason that's bad, by the way, is because number one, it means the vendor can pull out and you've spent thousands, you know, only a couple of grand or something like that, maybe towards the end. But it's very unlikely. But they could pull out at any point until the day of exchange. What it also does for some unscrupulous people, and a lot of the big buying companies do this, is they'll go all the way through legals. They will get to the day of exchange on a property when a vendor's moving out and all of that. And they'll go, oh, I'm really sorry. I've just looked at the numbers again, and I'm not going to be able to pay this. I'm actually going to be 15000 less. I know that's not ideal, but otherwise I just need to walk away from the property. But they're in a desperate situation there. It is not something I condone. I think Thing is absolutely disgusting, but a lot of people do that. So how is it different in Scotland? Well, Scotland do a lot of everything up front. Most importantly, they get a home buyer's report, which is a RIC survey, okay? Basically saying this is the situation, um, this is the price that we're looking for, this or over, typically. And then when you, you go for it and the lending that you're going to get, let's say you're going to get mortgage, they base it on that survey. They don't often need to send out their own people. They sometimes do just to verify if they're worried. But actually, you can put in your offer and you exchange there and then. The great thing about that is the vendor can't pull out 
and you can't pull out and change your mind unless there's something dramatic that comes up during the legal process. It's just much more protective of everyone involved. And it would stop the unscrupulous companies chipping prices last minute. The final big thing to acknowledge here is those home reports, the surveys. In Scotland, it is down to the vendor or the person selling the property to produce that document for everyone to see. In England, it's the buyer or the investor that pays for that survey. And if they end up pulling out of the property, it's ridiculous, it's so archaic, but then the new buyer then gets a different survey for the property. It's crazy, but that is the way it works. So you might be asking, well, Jamie, I'm not being funny. Right now, apart from the stamp duty, Scotland sounds like a much better place to be investing. And you'd be right. And the reality is, if I lived in Scotland, or I had a team in Scotland, or I had the time to focus more out there, I genuinely would be purchasing there myself. I think Scotland has an incredible amount to offer, and this isn't a video tearing it apart. It's a great place to be, but the reality is I've been in Yorkshire, um, Manchester, the North East, Birmingham, all of those areas for a long time. I've got my team set up there. And so, hey, watch this space. Maybe in the next five years, you'll see a cluster of properties starting to get purchased in Scotland and a much more diverse portfolio coming forward. So my answer is if you're thinking about investing in Scotland and you've got the team there, give it a go. So it has so much to offer. It has increased capital growth. You've got a rental market that's increasing. You've got restricted covenants around planning there as well, which makes it hard to get new builds, which means the demand goes up and up and up. So what can I say? Watch out, Edinburgh. Here I come. So if that's been valuable to you and you want to find out more, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Granted, it's mostly English property I talk about, but I hope you got value. If you did, let me know in the comments and likely destroy the like button on the way to the next video.